to need someone full-time on that and one of the two people to help with that also. The human resource person and I need to work hand-in-hand if payroll stays in my office because they're going to be taking in the new employees, all their information, and then it's going to have to come to us. And I don't have a problem with the human resource person. The payroll is going to have to be, I'm asking that they wait on that until the state legislature decides whether or not they're going to put that into our statutory duties. I don't have a problem working with the chief financial officer either. I think the more eyes on those books, the better off we're going to be. But I need help now. But uh, what reports do you prepare that can be done by somebody else, if any? Well, the 941s, which are quarterly, uh, state criminal and civil fees are quarterly. The um, it's called specialty court. It used to be called a drug court. It's quarterly. Civil are done quarterly, and all that information has come from all four of your JPs, your county clerk, your district clerk and your sheriff's department. All this information is each month of report that they give us, then we put it in a spreadsheet. That's the money that we turn into the state. Those are poorly. I have retirement. But you have to prepare those? Yes, because those are monies that are due to other people, so they have to come out of the district. That has to come out of my office. Uh, are these salaries that you've listed annualized, or is that the remainder? That's the annual, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will say currently in the budget, in the original budget request, by request of $1,500 for a computer. In this item today, she's requesting $3,000 for two computers. There is in the budget $1,500 out of the IT department for one computer for the treasurer's office. She's also mentioned <coughs> desks for any of the new employees. There is one idle desk right now in our building that came out of my department. So that could be reduced to one if the court decides to fill two positions. And I think Dennis told me earlier he's got a desk also that I could probably use in that. Wherever y'all decide to put us. So that little things like that. I'm more concerned with. And Joanna said that there was one for one computer. Is this two additional computers? Or no, I didn't realize one? there was a computer. Okay. There's already one in there, so this could get reduced to one. Are these salaries uh, in line with other salaries that are similar or in other offices? One. They are the same salaries that are currently being paid to her deputy treasurer. They are what were noted by the salary survey committee for that particular position. Okay. But what is your plan for both of these? For the, the additional staff. I mean, how would you utilize them? To help with their acceleration of bank statements would be one of them. To help with the reports for someone to be receiving the money in. A line would strictly be on payroll. Yesterday I had three JPs, no, two JPs, two JPs and this report come in. That takes over an hour out of my time to receive them in. Um, any human resource stuff that needs to be done until we get that human resource person finished. Filing, come in what? Credit card reconciliation. There's plenty to do. When they bring you deposits, they bring them just whenever they want to, or do you have a scheduled day that you accept? Really, the only time I asked them to bring it on Mondays and Tuesdays only was when I was by myself for those two months. Other than that, I'll, I'll accept them at any time. If I'm not going to be there, or if we're in the middle of a phone conference because we're still working on the training with the new program, I just send a fax out to everybody and say, hey, we're going to be on the phone, don't come by. But the majority of the time, we accept them at any time. Shelby, there is a procedure that has been implemented that anybody bringing money in has to bring it to the auditor's office first for confirmation, and then it goes to the treasurer's office. And back when Nancy was still treasurer, she and I had a schedule worked out so that we confirmed that one person would be there from my office to accept money. There have been several times when people have come in and we've had to turn them away because we're not going to count it once and then turn around and count it again when the treasurer's office is available. So a schedule for that would be ideal. Well, I'm not going to tell the JPs when they can or can't bring their money to me. Well, no. But if they have court, like yesterday you were in court, and I'm assuming some of it was county court, 
the county clerk can't come on Monday or Tuesday, or if they have JP, sure board, she can. They can go she, she can go. No, to, she didn't set the board room the other day. Well, you don't know what you're talking about that day. Well, nowhere in the statutory duties is telling me I can only accept money on certain days. And they have a timeline also when they're supposed to be bringing it to me. When? So, why did the schedule get? get when I took off, but she decided well, she didn't want to do that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> One thing that might be helpful in terms of Ms. Malone complying with one of her statutory duties is entirely within her discretion. But one of the issues that has come up is that Ms. Malone won't let anyone else make deposits. So there have been times when checks have been in her or cash in checks have been in her office for a month or two after they should have been deposited because Ms. Malone won't allow any of her deputies to make deposits. So Ms. Malone, and she's a constitutional county officer, it's her discretion as to how she operates that office. She has to comply with her statute. If Ms. Malone would allow someone else to make those deposits, then we might be able to avoid the problem of cash and checks sitting in her office for extended periods of time when it should be deposited in the bank. I'll tell you what we're out there today. Sitting here, is she not there? One, I think I guess we do. We need we do need to give give guys some help. I mean, that's just she's asking for it. So we need to give her something. What? How much? Well, I think <coughs> I'm getting it. Uh, I don't think we need to go totally full time. I'd rather give the part time and see how it works. If, if we find that the part-time maybe doesn't work, then we can maybe change that to a full-time person. I don't want to give another full-time, wait and see what the legislature is going to do this thing on the payroll because we don't know what the legislature is going to do, if anything at all. Uh, if that payroll preparation changes to the statutory duty of a treasurer, then I can see maybe putting a person in here later on. But I'm going to make a motion. We we can give her a part-time person. Uh, I don't know how many hours is that a year? Uh, 1,040 and 2,080 hours in a year. Give her six months worth of, uh, or remaining nine months of the year to finish up. I don't know where the court would want to do it, but on a part-time basis till we can see if there's any improvement in what's going on. And then if we need to, we'll take, take another another action. Well, I really need a full-time instead of a part-time. I need a full-time person in there. Another full-time person in there. That, that's that's my motion. What 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 are you talking about? Part-time, twenty hours, twenty-nine hours. Half the day. Shelby, yeah. are you talking twenty hours, twenty-nine hours? What amount of hours per week? Uh, was it twenty-nine hours a week? Was a, is a, or thirty hours a week? Well, from things that you Right. So twenty is it twenty? Twenty-nine to keep it under. Well, the original sure. request was twenty hours per week. Not just time. <coughs> I'm going to make a few comments. Uh, I know we've had problems in the treasurer's office for a long time. By the reports that came in, it didn't come in. During last year's budget, when they cut the employee out, I said they need to fund your office, they need to staff your office. I agree with that. We do need to put someone in there. Although, uh, whether we give her one employee, two or four employees, uh, we don't know what the job could get done. Still don't know. So, uh, we have to do something though. Uh, and that's why I'm asking for help. <coughs> so, can we hire an employee full-time, not as a temporary employee, and subject to what duties are still left in our office when we get the other personnel on. So you're talking about one full-time person until? Until the IT person and the uh, financial officer are hired. And the HR. HR person. HR. Do you mean a temporary full-time up to the nine months? So, yes. For this, this the rest of the budget year, one full-time, <coughs> that's what you're saying? Correct. On a temporary basis. On a temporary basis. We have to revisit at the start of the next next, next budget cycle. No. 
I can agree to that. One, a full-time person, and then during the budget process, make sure I'm getting this right, Pete, during the budget process, if I feel like I don't need that person, then we won't put it back in the budget for October 1st. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Okay. You I think you'll be able to find somebody like that? Oh, yeah. But to clarify, Pete, that's temporary because that affects, if it's a temporary defined position, then they are not contributors or a participant in the retirement system. That is correct. Have you made that in the form of motion? Shall we still There's, 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 there's still one on the table. But there was not a second motion. Okay. So it's not a second. Then I would make that motion that we hire someone <laughs> with those conditions. I'll second that. We'll, we'll, we'll say it again, be what those are. Okay. We hire a person full time as a temporary employee for her office, subject to consideration at next budget time. What if that person is needed in there? Uh, what period of time are you? Until October first. Until October first. Yes. I know you've asked for two people, and the motion's up here mm -hmm. once. I don't know if you judge it because it's already been made a second. Is that something that you can work with? Uh, yes. The time. So that is something you can work. With. Yes. That's going to be something cool. I would like a one and a half, but one will be fine. Yes. Hold on just a second. Yes, ma'am. Would y'all could mention, okay, we've, I saw it advertised, a CFO and an assistant CFO for human resources. That's going to take a bunch of the load off, too. So it seems like one, one temporary should be sufficient. Because you don't, a lot of the load is going to come off when y'all hire those uh, the CFO and the assistant CFO that was advertised in the paper. But the CFO cannot do my statutory duties. They can do. They can do the investment work, but they can't right. do the maintenance. Right. Work, right. Right. And they can help with the reconciliation of bank statements and keep everything well, up. That's a but lot of work. I know, but I still have to do it myself. I'm not going to let somebody else do it for me. It's, I'm still going to have to do it. I have to. I don't have a choice. It's it's my statutory duty. I can't. You can't give my duty to somebody else. The court will also need to perhaps amend that motion, Pete, to because currently the policy manual says after 90 days of employment, full-time employees are eligible for health, life, long-term <coughs> disability, etc. <coughs> the court will need to determine since this is only a temporary position. Will they, they won't participate in retirement because that's a TCDRS ruling because it's temporary, but y'all will need to note whether they will be eligible for the insurance benefits because they will be considered a full-time employee even though it's only temporary. Here to the day, Correct. If they work 40 hours a week, <coughs> and 39 hours a week, they're not considered right. full-time, and then after a 12-month period, the look-back period, then would they would have to be offered the insurance. And I stipulate yeah. that would be until October first. Yeah, but that's covered. well that's not saying that they won't be eligible for health, life, long term disability. Yeah, so if they're gonna refer to give them that benefit, you might as well give them retirement benefits. Well, if if I'm I representing a lot of counties, I will tell you if you're gonna cut out health and the ability to get health insurance, and I realize that's a big ticket item. If you cut out the ability to get health insurance, the quality of the people who are going to apply for this position to con. Okay? So, my only point in this is if you're going to give a full time employee, even if it's a temporary employee, you're not going to participate in the retirement plan, you're better off, in my experience, spending the money to give them the opportunity to get in your, your health insurance program because the quality of the people who are going to apply are going to significantly improve. And you might want them just add retirement while you're at it. You just make them, just fund the position until the next budget year. Make a full-time position and fund it until the next budget year. It might stay there. It might stay there, it might not. 
but then again, if it's only temporary and they're having to contribute 7% to a retirement fund that they aren't going to benefit from because you have to be vested eight years to get back the county's portion, I mean, it's... Well, in my mind, I have somebody that's they, worked for a county before that can add those out years or those months to Wouldn't they get their investment back? They would get their part back. Their part. They would get the county's right. part, which is, again, added paperwork, et cetera, right. to do that. And our TCDRS's policy says temporary positions are not participatory in retirement. Well, if I leave the motion the way it is, there'll be, up nine days, there'll be... Nine days. Nine days. Nine days. They will be eligible for benefits. For insurance benefits. Insurance. Not retirement. If that's what you're going to put it as a temporary position. We're going to have written down as a motion. Well, I don't have it written down. Oh, you just have no answer. There's no contract services that provide that service. Is there anyone? Yes, go ahead. No, yes, sir. Okay. It, as I heard your motion, it was that the treasurer's office get one temporary full-time employee for the rest of this budget cycle. Okay. And that would the temporary meant that they wouldn't participate in the retirement program, but they could participate in the health insurance program. And that was the motion I heard you make. I think that's probably that works for me. Shelby, was it you that just asked about contract? Yes, I was wondering if the service like you could call an accounting firm say, can you give us an employee to come help work in the treasurer's office for, for nine months? Well, I'm sure there'd be something out there. Or you could just hire someone on a contract basis where you wouldn't have the benefits with it at all either, but that's going to make it harder. It doesn't. Unless it's through a firm. Patreon motion. Yeah, that motion is full. That motion is full. I'm going to take it. Maybe second. Okay, be re repeated again so we make sure we've got it right. My motion is to hire for the treasurer's office a temporary employee for 40 hour a week service with insurance benefits until October 1st. October 1st. Yes. something else. Well, then technically it'd be September 30th because October 1 would be yeah. the new year. You got anything to say about that? Does the motion affect anything that you're involved in? No, it does not. Thank you. Any other comments by any of the commissioners? <coughs> okay. Um, so I don't, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, but, um, and I'll stop. Thanks. I was going to talk about the computers. I'm not going to need, because it's already in one budget that I already have, so I'm not going to need the computers, and I'll use Luana's desk. Um, we can just put that person in the office with me instead of remodeling the closet until we figure out next budget year where everybody's going to go and what's going to happen. So all I need really is just the motion for the hiring. Okay, if I understand the motion now, it's uh, to hire for the treasurer's office one full-time temporary employee for 40 hours per week working hours with ins insurance benefits until 9.30 the, the end of September. Is that, was that what you understood? Okay, is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. I oh, know by raising your right hand, I'm sorry. There's three, four, all against the same sign. Joe. Hey, may I just briefly tell them why I'm against? I'll make it short. Sorry, it's sweet. All right, thank you. Thank you sir. Uh, the reason that I voted against on that, and I usually give the public an explanation, is because she came in and asked for two people to try and resolve the situation that's here now. We're giving them one full-time temporary. So if we're back up here again, because it's not getting done or there's something falling behind and everything, I think that's a failure of the commissioner's court not giving her what she asked for. 
That's why I'm asking. That's why I'm, now if we gave her two and we, were, we kept coming back over here, then I could sit here and probably tell by, hey, we gave you what you needed and you still didn't come in compliance. Why? Give me an explanation. But if we're back up here, this is my personal opinion. I think it's a failure of commissioner's court not giving her what she asked for. Because I think that with one, we might quite possibly be back up here and we're not going to be really able to say anything because we didn't give her what she asked for. That's why I voted against. Thank you. Yeah, because I mean, the, the vote was three votes for the motion and two votes against the motion carried. Does anybody have anything else on the court to say about item 16 on the agenda? If not, let's move to item 17, the tax collector's report. I don't know if it's the bottom of the step. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? There it is. Okay. All right. This is a report for December of 14. Collections in the uh, county MO account. Uh, as of December of uh, December 14, three million seventy-seven thousand six hundred and seventy-nine dollars and thirty-six cents. Year to date. Four million four hundred twenty-five thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars and fifty-six cents. Their collection rate of twenty-one point one three percent. The length of collections for December ten thousand two forty-four oh eight. Year to date, the length of collections thirty-three thousand one hundred seventy dollars and forty-nine cents. Their collection rate of thirteen point oh nine percent. The county INS collections for December. $272,286.99. Year to date, $391,584.40 for a collection rate of 21.14%. Delinquent INS collections for December, $1,059.83. Year to date, $3,527.60 for a collection rate of 14.36%. Road and Bridge collections for December, $455,392.99. Year to date, $654,676.16 for a collection rate of 20.99%. The length of collections, Road and Bridge for December, $2,279.31. Year to date, $7,012.14 for a collection rate of 15.49%. Rural fire collections for December, current collections, $154,780.02. Year to date, $222,657.57 for a collection rate of 21.04%. Delinquent collections, Road and Bridge for December, $1,144.68. Delinquent year to date, $3,506.57 for a collection rate of 15.7%. Or any comments or questions? Is, is that pretty much on target for this time of year and for where we are? Yes, sir. December and January are traditionally our big months. So it'll be a lot more than this time. The next uh, item 18 review, discuss, and take any appropriate action regarding treasury reports from October 1st, 2013 through September 30th, 2014, and from October 1st, 2014 through December 31st, 2014, authored by Walter Long Jr. And uh, my, my, uh, problem with this is we started trying to go back through the commissioner's court minutes to determine what reports had been received and what had been uh, approved and what had been recognized as received but not approved and we could not match up or be anything for the last two years and I don't have anything and haven't found anything in the commissioner's court minutes 
that would furnish, fully furnish that information. And that's the reason I've asked for it. Um, Treasurer, still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, did, do you have any comments about that? Or? Well, if I didn't get a little bit more warning, I could have gone back and looked. I didn't realize. Well, this was on the agenda. It was supposed to be like all of them are. Well, there's been courtesy if you could have called me and told me I needed to go back and research. But, anyways, uh, I gave reports. I understood that. Maybe the county clerk talked to you about this, is that not so? I went to the county clerk and asked her to go back and look at the last few months of reports. I just, we did not go all the way back because you told me you were going to do that, so I wasn't going to waste my time doing something that you were going to do. Uh, I think it would have been a waste, but go ahead. So anyways, uh, I don't know what you're after, so I, I can't answer anything. I'm not after anything except the okay. accurate report. I, all I can tell you is I gave a report. Uh, I think the month of June and July was not given until the month of August because there were some issues there, but there were months reports were given. Some of them were accepted but not approved <coughs> pending the outcome of the 2013 fiscal year audit. I believe that was the last issue on this. Uh, the November report was, has not been approved. It's been presented on the 31st. But y'all did not approve that. It was accepted but not approved. No, if I remember. no, no. Nothing. Nothing because you weren't here. So they I don't have to be here for a mistake. Well, uh, James said to wait until you got here. All right. So, and the December report will not be done because we have, do not have everything with the new system. I can't even tell you how to run a report. I'm not, we're still training on it. Well, I can't tell you either. Right. I'm, and that I'm, I'm not doing the job, but I didn't run for it. Right. And we have a new system that we converted to in the middle of December. There's a lot more that's going to have to get done before I can bring present a report. It's difficult to work on a new system. I understand. Yes. Uh, particularly, what are we going to? It'll be a wonderful system once we learn it. But well, I, I thought we were if you don't know how to operate it, you can't say that. I thought we were going to stay with the old one until we kind of got the new one ready. All the bugs worked out of it. No, the middle of December, they cut it off. We cannot do anything on that old system. So what I have to do is run the old report from December 1st until we went to the new live system and then from the new system forward. Like checks that were written for the APCA account on the first uh, meeting of December didn't come over on my outstanding checklist on bank reconciliation. So now I have to go manually put all those in. Have we called the company back to come back and help? No, no, that's not something that, the only way they can do that, per, per Rebecca on that, if we had it in an Excel spreadsheet, we could send it to them, and then they could put it in, but it's not in an Excel spreadsheet, it's just a regular list of checks. So if I'm going to put them in an Excel spreadsheet and send them to them to input, I might as well input them myself. What kind of support services do they provide? I mean, can they send somebody down here, I guess, and say, hey, I need to, I can help y'all get the bugs out? As far as I know, our money is, our hours, I guess, with our tech on-site support is done. I guess, right? Go on. Sure that. So then we have a girl named Rebecca that uh, we call and set up conference calls with for training. Now, she can't help me in cashiering. I had some issues with cashiering. I couldn't put checks in because product codes weren't in there. I finally got somebody with tech support to uh, tell me that I didn't have the access to product codes. So I had to get Luana to come into my office and get them verbal okay for me to do the product codes. So there were checks that couldn't be received in. But on site, they're done with that. It's just learning a new system. Everything takes three or four more steps than what it was before. Learning what the names of the reports are. Just getting the kinks out. Luana, you have any comments about that? I'll go back to the original agenda item, which is the treasurer's reports. The reasons those were accepted but not approved is because we did not have reconciled bank statements. So and we, do we yet have? I do not know where I stands on those and if they are accurate reconciliations or not. But they're done through November. They're not done in December. Are they accurate through November? Yes. Okay. Earlier when you were November talking about your health. Yes. 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 No, this year. Last month. Two months ago. Not last year. November, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, you're in November 14th, sorry. When you were talking about requesting help and all, you said they reconcile credit cards. 
Are all those reconciled in your reconciliations? All credit cards are accounted for, et cetera? There are some that are not our credit cards that we have to get checks written for them because they went to, like one was for the Carn City Municipal Court. Uh, JP1 brought that in. There was one that was paid to her that she never got the ticket for. So they're pending us shipping them out. But some of them not, not, no, not December's, no. Yeah. Are they reconciled in that the county treasurer's and the county auditor books are in balance? They're the same books. So her books are in balance with your books now? Well, because whatever I do affects her books and whatever she does. I mean, they're the same books. So the when same they, get a, report, system, when they get a report from Luana and get a report from you, they are now with the same balance? They have always been. Because She's, the system is the same. The difference is if there's something in the bank and it hasn't been re receded in the system, then our system books are not accurate matching with what the bank well, the, the is, the which is why the reconciliation is important. The copy of the report that I got from one of the county commissioners when he was questioning this, some months her books were two and a half million dollars off compared to your book, and some months two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They never were forty two thousand. They never. Your balance and her balance were completely different. Because she doesn't use the juvenile, I use juvenile funds, I use all funds, and she takes out the juvenile funds on the balance. That's why there's a difference on there. But there also would not be a difference on what was computer generated. That's going to be exactly right. the same. Exactly. My summation, my items of interest might reflect different balances because I don't include juvenile because Commissioner's Court does not have authority over the juvenile probation grant funds. And I've always included them. Uh, um, I've asked other treasurers and they include them on theirs and so I choose to include them online also. And but one of hers, I'm sorry. The system generated reports are the exact same thing. In the old system, we'd go to BA accounting, budgetary accounting, we'd go to standard reports, we would select cash receipts, cash disbursements for cash, certificates of deposit, and outside investments. And those would be the exact same. Because even if I go in on the bank manager side, which was the treasurer side, and go to do the reports, it throws me straight to her report. And one of the it's things not my report, right, it's, it's the, the budgetary, budgetary accounting, accounting report. report. If I try when I have to go in there to run my report, it throws me into the budgetary accounting side. It's the same thing. And then into her with the new system, if there was money that was not receded in. And then when we're doing bank statements and I see that it wasn't receiving in, we can go back and post those to the general ledger to the previous month and it's more accurate that way. But in the past, they would have to close the books before I could even reconcile the bank statements. But now they don't have to do it that way. So I can go back if I did miss something and put it back in the previous month where the ledger from the accounting system will be closer to what the bank has. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and have you agreed that your bookkeeping is the same in your office as it is in her office? Or what is generated by the system? By the, the system only. Correct. 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 Because it has to be put in the system to be generated. And the system is not complete. Currently, right now, our conversion is done, our on site training is done, there are learning issues still as far as how to compose a report so that currently right now I ran a what is referred to in this system as the treasurer's report which is receipts and disbursements and how it affects assets and liabilities <coughs> and I need to go back and research because I don't think it's including also the way it's set up right now also including all of our outside investments. And that is just a matter of selecting the correct things when you're formatting the report. All right, thank you. Would, would the treasurer have any <coughs> target date for having all of these reports up and in order? But I'm sure the court, and I'm the new person here, so I haven't missed it any, but do we have a I know you got to get the new person on the ground, you're dealing with new system, et cetera, et cetera. But can you give uh, the court possibly any projection of when 
month, two months that you can have everything in order to where the treasurer's report comes every month and that sort of thing? They've been coming every month, but this month, it'll hopefully by the end of January, we can go in and have everything in the system like it's supposed to be and, and verify, like she said, that everything moved from the old system to the new system. Okay, well, I may have misunderstood, but I thought November was the last. Well, November is here, and that was presented in December. So in January, I would present December's bill, or December's month. Okay. And that won't happen until the end of this month. The commissioner's court hasn't been approved the report, and I don't know. So the audit we did, and we paid the the auditing firm to come get the checks, the statements balance. They just did it for the 2012-2013 year. They did it through September 30th, 2013, which that was going to be a question. So after they did that, from October 1 of 14, have you updated your reconciliations based on those yes, corrections? Yes, on the right, those corrections, yes. Commissioner, that was the reason that the court started to accept but not approve the reports because the 2012-2013 audit established that there were a number of inaccuracies, okay? And I spoke of one earlier, the $100,000 check from, from uh, the historic commission was never recorded. It wasn't reflected on the, on the, uh, on the treasurer's reports. It wasn't included in any of the statements. It was one of the things that the county had to pay the auditors extra to go back and figure out why the accounts wouldn't reconcile. And that was one of the reasons why, for a period of time, the commissioner's court was accepting but not approving the, the reports. And again, those reports were the same reports that the auditor gave, too, so. And we're going to be doing our upcoming audit. It start January 26th. 26th. And <coughs> are we going to have the same problem with the bank statements again, maybe having to get somebody to come in and we do them to get them all caught up? To no. I say she's current on them. I have not seen them. Okay. Commissioner, they're going to have to start through the audit. And as, as part of that, they get information both from the auditor and the treasurer. And ultimately, the question is going to come down to can they reconcile what is in the books versus what the banks reflect as the, as the ongoing balance. And that should be the, the reconciliation should mean that it's the same. Correct. The reconciliation ought to, the reconciliation needs to be the same so that you can get a clean audit opinion, which you need for your bonded indebtedness. Warren, if, 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 have you had anybody in your office doing bank statement balances? I mean, the... the Michelle has historically also done bank reconciliations back several treasures ago when the improprieties first occurred under previous administrations. Okay, but I guess I'm asking, is she pretty much current with what the treasurer's been presenting or, or is there a Again, I haven't seen Vi's reconciliations, but I know Michelle every month after she reconciles, and she is not current. I think she's on July right now. Uh, because she was helping with the others, but from what I understand, every and I know every month she prepares a list of issues she's got, questions she's got, and a lot of them stem around credit cards that uh, need to be addressed. That's why I was asking by if she was totally reconciled with credit cards. Yeah, in, in October, we set a separate checking account, account strictly for credit cards because we can get. Thirty or forty thousand dollars a month in credit card payments from between the board JPs and the county clerk's office. So we set a separate checking account specifically for that, so it's not so redundant on the, the regular account that it was being. So is there any way you can take your stuff and show it to her to make sure, try to find out where in the heck we're at? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've, I've always asked for a, a sit down with auditors. I don't have a problem, <coughs> and not that I want her to sit there and, and show me what I've done wrong sit down there and say, well, this is what I've got, and well, this is what you've got. Well, i got a difference, so I'm going to go back to my desk, and I'm going to figure out what the difference is, and then we're going to come back again. I mean, it should be a team effort. 
Yeah, it should be a team effort, but again, as I go back to what I said a long time ago, you know, it's, there's always been a rift between the auditors and the, and the treasurer's office. Historically, it's not just in this county, it's in every five counties. But I, I just, I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of, of not knowing the true statements that we have, what, that we should have. We should know the money that we got in the county. We should know, I, I look at other other counties that compare to Cornish County and I see their, their, all, their treasures and, and they present stuff different. I, I've looked at their, different ones and they, they, they have just as many employees and just the royalties and stuff coming in as we do and they get their stuff done. I just, I just they don't They probably know. have more staff than I No, know. they only have one in the office. No, not already on that one. Well, okay. And kind of getting back to the investment officer. We're not oh, going okay. to the investment oh, officer. I was just going to say, any, any one of you guys can be the investment officer. You just got to take some so Did you get your answer, Judge? About the, about the bank statements? I don't think so. But I, when I asked the question, I didn't really expect to. Okay, so can you and I set a meeting up so we can discuss what you're after and I can find those answers for you? I'm not after anything except proper records. Okay, all. well then would you like a meeting with me so I can bring those proper records to you? Not today. Well, not today, because no one's payroll week, but one day next week? Well, if, if it's convenient for you, yes, for me, yes. Yes, okay, I will do that. Okay, any, any other questions or items at this point? Judge, I think, I don't know about you, but I think when you have that meeting, I would like to have the auditor and treasurer in the same room. If you could, you know, maybe, maybe we could get some of this squared away. That's from my, my request. We may just have it at a, at a workshop type meeting where we don't take any action and have it just for that purpose. And I think that would enable everybody to be there and hear whatever's going on and see where we are or try to see. We'll see what happens. That's what I plan to do. Okay, uh, at this point, I think we're on item 19, payment of the bill. $28,750. That is for a 2015 Peterbilt truck. Uh, to the same vendor, Rush Truck Center, $42,475. That is for the trailer or that tractor. Ronco Equipment Company, $99,443. That is for the purchase of the Bearcat distributor. Those are all items that after the budget adoption were itemized out of the $19,985,983.55 that was established in the budget for road materials, freight, contractors, and equipment. Mike brought a previous listing to the court requesting specific equipment purchases and these three are part of that. On the next page, on page 8, again about two-thirds of the way down, payment to Ronco Equipment Company, 
in the amount of $1,974.88. That is rental of a sweeper. Was that both mine? Yes. There is also from Road and Bridge a payment to the Chapman firm, PLLC, which is Jeff Chapman, the outside counsel for the court, uh, in the amount of $1,338 for attorney services in relation to contracts that need to be implemented when we contract with outside vendors to do these road repairs and or constrictions. The total for this bill cycle is $740,262.62. If you go to the very last page, page 12, there is account summaries based on different expenditures within this cycle. Well, actually, it's the last two and three quarters pages. But on the final page, under road materials, the total expended is $492,805.64. Included in that is those equipment purchases of $270,668. So actual dollars for road materials is $222,137.64. One other large expenditure I want to point out on page 6 of 12, almost middle of the page under the Sheriff's Department to Southside Bank is a payment of $112,182.33. That is our final payment on the cop sink system when we originally purchased it. We financed it for two years. That is our final payment. Any other questions? Where is the labor? Employee personnel costs, is it included in this? No, this is just uh, accounts payable. Pay this is not payable, correct. Any other questions?
Okay, item 20, report of fees, fines, and money collected by the following departments. County Clerk. We don't have a report available right now. We'll have it at the next Why? Why not today? We didn't have it ready. Okay, I understand not being ready. Why not? I would have to ask Carol if she didn't give me an exact explanation. But okay, next time you come for be prepared. I'm assuming it's due to court and everything that we've been overwhelmed by. You mean uh, because we sat up here in court last night until 6.15 or 6.30, people don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But, and handle, handle 60, 60. 66 no, in the morning and 63. 60 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. We handled 126 cases in court yesterday. Yeah. County court. Is it jail court? Uh, mm. No. <laughs> it would be full of us probably. <laughs> It's, there are a lot of different, we looked at that many, the county attorney has dealt with that many, and uh, it's ongoing, and we're working at trying to start cutting down on the uh, the number of items that uh, haven't been looked at, and uh, we've gotten behind on a lot of things in the last, uh, oh, I don't know, it doesn't matter, I mean, we're behind, and we're working to catch up. And, at some point, we'll be called up, I'm not sure where or when, but we're working on it, I assure you. Uh, District Clerk, is she here? No, she gave me a copy of her report. Well, I suppose you could deposit it with us. Have we got it? Okay. All right, we've got it. I'm sorry. Okay. I haven't had time to even look at all of it. Any of the board, as you're looking at it, have any questions? I'm not sure we can answer them without the clerk, but um, we can mark them and talk with her about them individually. in the report a uh, total money collected for the month of December 2014 was $15,870 and the, the checks disbursed uh, $4,883.40. I have no idea what any of that covers uh, that the the normal uh, operation for her office and the cases that they handle, and they it's a continuing process in her office. I will talk with her about it and see if there's anything that we should know. Sir, in the middle of her report, it says checks to be dispersed at Craig's Okay, you heard that. Felony probation, pre sentence investigation, pre trial. Diversion, color wheel, etc., etc. It's, it's in there. There's all sorts of things that go on in that office. Uh, we'll continue and have been going on for many years. Yeah, and as I say, many things, you just can't limit it to one item or two items because they're, they're wide, they're whole scope of the district district clerk's office is to handle all filings for the district courts and there's three or four different categories of district court use that we do that they keep the filings on so if you have any any questions about anything in any of the district court system go down and talk to the district clerk she does good job i go in there every day Okay. Report, uh, Mr. Hancock. Can the attorney, her? Thank you, sir. Table with a lot of fish prep cream that you can get to you. I think she did. Did she send out any of this? I'm sure it's here. I didn't have time to separate everything and go through it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
I forgot to carry it home with me from court last night when I was getting home at 6.30. <laughs> You're right. You saw it over here. Judge Van, I'll just summarize it for you. Keep you can put parts in this too. Well, I'd prefer to have it in front of me and start looking at it. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Now, what are you getting? She's going to give us anything. Yes, sir. Not anything? We never get it. Total collected uh, in his office is 
16,274.10. Total collect kept by the county is 10,650.96 and remitted to the state is 5,623.14. Thank you. Is there one more? No, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Judge. We appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Juvenile department. Mm -hmm. Nobody's in charge of the juveniles today. They're running wild and loose, probably. Special projects. Uh, you got the money. Correct. And 
is there when when does that go? I think we're the, we budgeted to the end of this month, I believe. So we're going to have to put it back on commissioner's court to see uh, who's. Well, I guess the contractor would be responsible as far, as far as housing, because right now we are housing in uh, in Wilson, and then we have some in that in that Yes, sir. Her, I'm sorry. Did yeah. Her leave? Did her I just, I just want us to be, you know, I just want us to be aware of that we, I think we need to start looking at, at, this, at that now because there's quite a bit of cost that's going to come back to, Correct. to buy, buy us, it's going to come out of your budget that we need to get, get back. Herb, we were just talking about Sheriff's Department, his report, and uh, you are involved kind of in the, in the prisoner situation to some extent. Anything that you would add about when we might see a reduction because we're moving to the new jail, if it ever becomes a new jail? Reduction, we work on the case. I, I know I just caught you off the cuff. Reduction, the way we're handling it now, I go to jail twice a week. And I usually get a roster of who's in the jail and I look at the cases that are assigned to county court and try to work something out on those cases uh, weekly to where either we, they do their jail time or they release. And that's been the best thing that I've done thus far. Uh, as far as population numbers, and that's all that I've been working on is reducing the number of prisons for the jail population. I guess the question I already had was, the jail is supposed to be open in December, and then the schedule is moved to January or wherever. And in the month, what we, the, the last schedule update the court approved was, that I remember, was January, in January. So the people that were housing in other, other facilities at this time, after January, starting February 1, and, and some of the fees or the cost incurred, are we going to be able to start passing those over to the contract? We provided for that in the original contract at $70 a day, and we're going to get that back. That's already, those letters have already been written. We anticipate, we're just guessing June or July, and we are, uh, we've already notified the contractor we expect those reimbursements. Uh, on any cost that's associated with that. Uh, the chief told me that the, our budget runs out sometime at the end of this month, but we had already planned for that when the original contract was set up. Now, when they extended the time, the 30 days, uh, I don't repeat, re remind me when that happened. Probably. The contractor extended time about November 15th. They said we can't be in there December 20th. And they said it'd be January. Or December 6th would be January 20th. I don't remember the time. Now, now what the, the, the contract addressed the issue on December the 20th. And after that point, we provide for damages in the amount of the cost that the county incurs for housing inmates outside of our normal process. GO houses some of them, but there, I understand there's a lot of cost outside of the system. And we also charge so much for the for, for GO, I think we even provided for that. So the contract covers that and that has already been the notice has already been sent out on that. Notice is to the contract. To the contract, yes, it's already been sent out. In fact, Jeff uh, and I have done that probably 30 days ago. Any other questions? Shall we maybe, I don't know if the know, Jeff tried to get us conference set up today. We <coughs> need to come down here and meet with us today and we get a turn of course. We'll try and talk about it. Thank Thank you. Find out exactly where things Thank you. Judge, uh, I was going to let y'all know also this Thursday, 
this Thursday, this week at 1030, we have a meeting with uh, with Lorraine and the jail contract, just for your info, I don't know if you're aware of it. To go through it? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not aware of it. I'm okay, not important enough to be given to the time. I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of it. Need a ride? I'll give you a ride. That is not the con that's not the agree the meeting that we're talking about. That is a different meeting that has to do with accelerating this uh, contract because it's behind schedule. That meeting that the sheriff is talking about has to do with the on site individuals. Uh, we're trying to deal with the owner of the company and the others at this point. And getting this on track as best we can. Thank you. EMS. Uh, December of 2014, uh, we had 139 dispatch requests, uh, total of 152 patient contacts. Uh, we transported 88 of those patients, had 53 refusals, um, which 53 refusals is probably about double the number of refusals we normally have, uh, but we had about number, we had about double the number of minor fender bender car wreck type deal so that kind of plays to that number uh, six canceled calls uh, nine multi-patient calls uh, zero air evacuations three out of county transports uh, and we did uh, three uh, fire hazmat assist uh, calls um, ended up being 71 trauma and 79 medical calls for a month uh, that brought our year-to-date uh, call total to 1,601 calls for the year. Um, collections for the month, uh, our Medicare total was $14,125.88. Uh, other insurances, $8,099.28 uh, total collections uh, by my office for $22,000. Two hundred twenty-five dollars and sixteen cents. It's brought our year to date through thirty-one December, uh, three hundred eighty-four thousand eight hundred thirty-four dollars and forty cents. Uh, something else I have here that uh, we didn't get done before Friday, but want to make sure everybody has a copy. Back uh, September October time frame, Shelby had asked for. Uh, some numbers that kind of reflected the past few years pre oil field boom to the date of the uh, kind of goes by uh, the, the uh, it'll give you the, the year the dispatch request medical patients for that year the trauma patients for that year um, the uh, down at, at the, the second part of it shows the calendar years. If you'll notice from 2013 to 2014, we had a 42% increase in call volume. Uh, 2013, we had 1,125 calls. Uh, so uh, we've, we've surpassed that by 475 calls for this year. Uh, a 2010 to 2014 increase, uh, we have an increase of 121% on our call volume uh, over those four years. And then uh, we broke it down, uh, graph uh, and charts, color coded um, uh, for everybody. I'm going to try to do this maybe quarterly uh, just to kind of <coughs> see where we're at call volume wise. Uh, um, we had, had compiled this information so that we had it um, for uh, not not just for budgeting, but um, for any extra money that might come our way in the forms of grants or or, or state funding or some kind. Um, so we have this, and we can just pull it up and 
uh, and everybody has a copy of it. And it's, uh, do you ever, did you ever get a percent, how much you build out versus you collect it? You know, I don't have a percent on it, Shelby. I know you and the judge had asked me at the last meeting, uh, and I told y'all that I had a sheet uh, that we go by that shows all of our um, uh, all of our bills and some of these uh, go back uh, 365 days uh, even into 2012 on some of these bills uh, I did make a copy for you too I didn't make a copy for everybody else but I will email everybody um, and I'll be happy to go over these with you to kind of show you um, uh, where they're at um, it's uh, these are actually it's about 11 pages long uh, and this is the short form not the long form uh, but that has uh, amounts billed uh, and uh, the ones that have paid the ones that owe parcel payments how many days old those bills are so I'm going back to our billing company and kind of pushing them our biggest thing that we have problems with collecting is we have a over abundant amount of self pays people who don't have insurance people who um, uh, so we're, we're doing those and, and, and a lot of those turn in and I don't, not a lot of those some of those do turn into people with insurance uh, they were work related they were things of that nature so those that are like 30 days old I don't concern with too much it's those that are 160 days that we've sent two or three bills to and uh, have never gotten any feedback um, and, and anybody that knows, I mean, the sheriff knows as well as I do that sometimes we, we get calls and we, we pick patients up and take them in and maybe some of the, in, the information they give us is not as correct and true. So then it takes 30 to 60 days to track that person down and get the information. Um, and and we're, we're really working hard. That's something I'm really going to work hard on this year is upping that. Um, I know that was kind of put on the back burner this past year with everything else we had to bring up to code with EMS. So that's something that I'm really going to work on. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll try to have a percentage on that for you next time. Uh, also, I guess Steve maybe can, he was more in on the meeting than I was, but you had a, a meeting with the, for the building? Yes, we had uh, last week, we had a, a pre bid meeting. Um, uh, to go over some of the, well, the rain had the pre-bid meeting to go over some of the specifics with the contractors and Pete can jump in here because he knows a lot more about the contractor side of things than I do. Uh, but uh, I know that we did have, uh, I believe, seven contractors there. there actually, there were five contractors. There were seven people, five, two of them. Okay, that's there, what. There were five contractors and four of them were definitely said they were big. Well, Lorraine today made comment that the contractors are asking her to move it to the 22nd because the the electro, elect, the electrical people are, are tied up. To the, the, all the contractors have the same problem getting somebody to bid the electrical stuff, so they want another week to do that. So she's going to have the thing on the 22nd, she said. Correct. So the, I guess it's still open in here in the courtroom? Or? I, I'm assuming. Yes. I have one question for you. Yes, sir. Reported $384,000 collection for January, December, that's for 2014, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. How much of that was uncollected Medicare for years to come? None of that. None. none of that is. I did not add that into that. I have that number at my office and I can, uh, I'll, I'll send it no, to you. No, I just want to make okay. sure. Yes, sir. yes, sir. And I thought about clarifying that and I skipped over it. It's who are you using on the collection part of We use uh, uh, AR management solutions out of Irving. Um, and they handle both the billing and the collection side of things. Um, that's who we were using when I took over last October. Uh, and we just rolled with those guys. And, and really, I've been, I've, I don't know so much about their collection side of things, their billing side. They seem uh, to be getting me the information that we need to get from our end. 
the more information, correct information we gather on our end, the faster and easier billing is, uh, especially when 99% of our billing is emergency. Um, but but I, as far as their really collections ends, I, I don't I don't really have a comment on that yet. Uh, I do know they're pretty easy to work with. I don't have any problems getting in touch with them. I don't have any problems getting answers back. I know they were real good about collecting the, or helping us collect the Medicare money that that was the back Medicare from before. Um, uh, I know they worked real hard with Moana on that stuff to get that all that stuff collected. And, and they're still good. Yes, sir. Good yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe so. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have completed uh, once County Road 165 finding uh, between Mother Nature and everything else. We've got it completed. County Road 211 has been completed. Uh, we are in the process right now. County Road 269 from 119 North has been completed to 271. We are actually <coughs> 271. And we're carrying that all the way to County Road 277. We're hauling 2,000 tons of material a day. We started on State Highway 80 on 277. And what we're doing is we're working towards each other until we hit a point where the truck's going to create a problem. Uh, we're also, that's 2,000 tons a day. So we've got a lot of action up there in the Gillette area. Uh, as far as everything here, uh, we're hoping County Road 211 will get uh, ready for bid, hopefully by the end of February. That road will be ready to go so we can get that completed. And then there is a summary of 1747 in front. It was late. I got it late, so I got it to y'all from late spent. It's a summary. And I'll go real quick through it. County Road 199. The documents are completed. The project should be ready for Commissioner's Court to authorize request bidding for the contractors at the last meeting in January with the bids opening about February 18th through the 25th. Uh, County Road 326, construction, uh, construction contract for listed construction are ready for the county signature, and that is with the bridge winding. Uh, County Road 326 again with the 1747. The construction documents for the roadway have been started. It should be ready for bidding in March. And then uh, the bridge on County Road 277. Thank God that's about done. But uh, that should be ready for completion hopefully by this month. And then we should be ready to go with that. And then uh, County Road 182, in which is the final road of 1747. The construction documents have begun. The plan should be ready for bidding sometime in April. What I'm trying to do is get this going every month so we can get the 1747 behind us completed. And uh, hopefully we get enough contractors to come out here and bid on it. Basically, all I have. Mike, uh, I heard today that you had some people quit or retire or what? I've got Richie from Gillette area retired. I picked up this morning a blade man, and I had another guy come in, but he has a transportation issue. We're going to get with him, see if he wants it. Uh, last month, I had three guys retire. So I'm trying to fill a bunch of spots right now. But we're still going forward, everything's still moving. But luckily I can hire contractors to provide the blade to you, which that's where I'm at right now. Until we get this contract through uh, Chapman and, and get all that completed. Do you have someone in your organization to verify the work that the contractors are doing and I ask this because one of the people in Rungi who has a bit of construction experience indicated that some of them were 
he thought doing way less than good quality work and providing way less than good quality materials. And I, you know, I know the highway department has someone on site almost all of the time. I realize that may not be possible to the county, but do you have someone that's designated to follow up on what the contractors are doing? The people I got are my two foremen, but what we're doing right now, we do not actually have the whole contractor out there. What we're doing is we're contracting the blade and the operator, and he's working with the crew on the road. So the whole crew is there. They're all verifying what to do it. The foremen are there making their spot checks, plus handling public complaints, which we've got a few of those. Oh, come on. <laughs> how, how are you handling them? I mean, where are you on the work orders? I know there's other stuff oh. that you're doing. You just, everything else is getting kind of pushed back. Yeah, every time we get ready to start working on work orders, we end up with a little shower. We had County Road 190 where we had about seven to ten 18 wheelers stuck in a ditch because they use pit run material which is nothing but clay and you know clay you're going to slide around so we had trucks fall in the ditches so we had to jump there we've got uh, county road 269 going south i got with eog they gave me two stockpiles of material over there but they give me deadlines more or less to get rid of it get it out of, off the property so what I got to do is I got to put the work orders behind in order to grab this material so I can haul it just right in front of the facility. So I'm not going to lose that material for free. <coughs> I'd rather get it and put it on the roads and get it done while it's just going to pop away. I'm going to leave this with you. This is from Cole Campbell with uh, in Canada, and uh, he was he called yesterday about 2:19. And he said, ordinarily, that they do not pay because of liability, do not approve <coughs> roads because of uh, liability issues. But apparently, with 219, and I'm not familiar with it, but he said they have a grip facility somewhere down. And he said the the uh, bill or the improvement stops at someone's gate, and then they have to go further. They are willing to. Uh, stand the cost and do it for you. So I'm going to give this to you. It has his phone number on it. If, I would appreciate it if you would contact him because there's some free money. Okay, no, no, I, I grabbed that. I've got uh, Sprint. I'll, I'll leave this with y'all too. Sprint has got a hold of me. They're willing to put all the limestone costs all the way from 72 past their facility, uh, the facility. And that's almost a mile. So I told them, as long as you fit the cost, we'll have a blade there, we'll get everything done, we'll make sure all the drainage is there. I take advantage of anything that's thrown at me. But there again, that answers Shelby's question. Why are my work orders getting pushed back? Well, when you can grab it for nothing and save you and have somebody deliver it, why not grab it? I, he did tell me, but they may be willing to do the whole thing, blade work and all. Oh, that'd be perfect. And I, he just said, we will do it. So whatever you can extract, extract. Oh, I do. Have you, yeah. have you finished 354? No. We went down there. We started right there where those trucks almost slid into each other. We got the slickness out of there, and then we had to jump across 354 towards off the race because when they dropped that hill uh, by, I guess I don't know, by Sammy. Anyway, when they dropped the hill where the pavement stopped, they had trucks sliding off in the ditches, and uh, back in the past, we had a truck that was full of fuel, if I remember right, slide off in the ditch, and it created a major headache. They are fracking 14 wells back in that area, and they're just tearing up the road, and we only got like a two-inch crest on it, so once you break that crest, all we got is baby powder, and it just starts. You know, also something I've noticed that when these guys are putting in these entrances for their wells or their facilities, they're bringing all the water off their facilities into the county, county roads. And, and, and 165 an example and some other roads they've done that. And all that does is create a, a mess for everybody else later on. Same thing with uh, on county road of, uh, well I'll just say, I'm going to say 190 for sure. That, you know, that, that, those trucks are always on there and they're tearing it up, fracking. Is there any way we can come back on them from just tearing up our road like that? See, same thing with Select. Select's got that one road behind their facility and all their runoff from their property runs onto that road. You might as well just go ahead and put ducks in that 
in the, in the road there and start up and up because water's, water can't go nowhere. It's supposed to concern I have is start to fall into the landowner's property. You can start seeing where it's been silting out and simply silting out to his property. Yeah, well, what we've been doing is we're building up our road about 12 inches. So what that does is it creates a diversion to where it can't cross the road. And we're using the limestone so it holds up real good. And where we can cut ditches, we cut ditches. Right now, I don't have enough personnel in order to move equipment and do everything and cut ditches. And 165 is a good example because I talked to you about it. Yeah. We got to get a scraper in there because there has never been ditches there. This is something I inherited. It's something that needs to be done. But until we get this contract that we're working with Chapman on this, I'm not going to get no heavy equipment in there or anything until the county is released from all liability as far as the contract. Then we're going to get scrapers in there and we're going to have to do some serious work. Until then, what we did was we put limestone, got a passport, it's safe, no problem. I haven't had no complaints, believe it or not, from the bus routes now. And that's the main thing. As long as the buses can go through without sliding around, I'm happy. Basically, um, we have completed uh, the election for the uh, Senate seat 17, District 17, and we're still waiting to hear on a, uh, a runoff date that should come pretty quickly if it's going to happen. So, but there, I did read. I mean, there are two other seats within the. There's one in the Senate and two in the House with ours. Uh, so there's three total seats that are vacant right now, and no, no runoffs have been done yet. Some of those, those elections were held before so anyway um, and then um, along with that we are we are in major prep mode for the um, contracted elections that will be happening in May we're already you know hitting some deadlines on the calendar for um, for uh, those elections so we're working uh, with different entities to try to get some contracts in place and making sure that we're meeting those deadlines as well and then we still got the mapping project going on we're trying to make sure that you know, our maps are as correct as they can be and, and that type of thing and, and making sure that the people are in the right districts as they should be. We'll work with each one of those entities, but that can take care of the county itself. But we'll work with those entities first to make sure that those are correct, the newest the, for the May elections to make sure that they don't have the problems they had last year. Because uh, some of those school districts, evidently when they turn in maps or whatever, they didn't turn in the right uh, information and, and or the stuff was never put into the computer. I'm not sure which, but anyway, so um, we're trying to get all of that straight as well for, for them. I mean, it's their about obligation. March, about March that we're supposed to verify the precinct in our the, the other the, yeah. the other county, I'm, I'm sorry, the county? Uh, well, only if we've made any changes, which we haven't done. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, according to the little calendar here, it says that uh, for our voting precincts, we haven't made any changes. So by March, and we're, I'm also working on trying to put together the uh, application for the. Uh, it says the March the first month the commissioner's court makes may make mandatory determination on whether the county election precincts comply with the law and make boundary changes. Exactly. By March first. We'll be looking at that. Yes. That's one of our side jobs as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> but we're also trying to work on um, you know, getting the countywide election precincts as we've talked about before and my deadlines and work on that as well. As I stated earlier, because of the construction of the different reports, I don't have a report to present at this time. We'll have it by the 31st, 30th. All right, when you get it to us as soon as you can before the 31st. All right, thank you. Um, status report of the county personnel policies. 
still be existing? Yeah, and there's nothing to report on that. We've, we've advertised for that HR position. Uh, we've advertised for all three of them. All three of them, but I don't know if we've got any responses or not. Where are the responses to go? I don't know. I understood to your office. Well, one of them has the fax number is to my office. Uh, with no email address to send it to. One was, I think, the county judges, and one might have been the county attorneys. All three have had different fax numbers. Mm -hmm. I'll check on it. Yeah, they're different in the advertisements in the newspaper. The ones online have three different fax Excellent. numbers. Yeah, okay. Hey, Warner, I've been asked uh, whether they advertise in more than the uh, county wide. I have no idea. I was not included in that process. Probably not, Pete. I'm not sure. I do know you can put them on the tax website too, so that's something I'll let you see. Oh, which website? Texas Association County. Oh, okay. Alright. I'll see. Okay. Uh, Shelby. Status report on the county personnel policy. I just met them. They're going well. Okay, yeah. We've talked about them some, and I have the chip that we need to do a good bit of work on, which we're involved in with other things. Commissioner Precinct 1. That's me. Okay. Same report from your precinct. Annex status report. B. All right. Uh, we had a report that uh, they didn't have any heat in the sheriff's office. Uh, we're still uh, going to let fire mechanical do what they did, they took, there were four thermostats in the sheriff's office that controlled the hall units. And they controlled Herb's office. Uh, there were thermostats in there, but anyway, they, when they changed some of that to get the hall units to heat more and to get Herb units to heat more, supposedly, uh, Robert Ingram said that they didn't have any control with their thermostats in that office. We have to get them here. I haven't got a commitment when they'll be here, but they come right here. Well, they had to come right here. Anyway, we need to get them back here and take care of that and see what we can get so they have to be here. And it was only at night, is that right? Uh, it was midday when we were here between 2 and 5 p.m. Uh, there was no heat at all. Uh, up until like we didn't leave till nine o'clock at night. That's correct. Okay. We came in at two in the afternoon till nine in the evening. There was no heat. Anyway, we're, we're working on that. I'll get this back here. Uh, other things that we need to do uh, as commissioners and judges, as court, we're going to have to decide what offices we want in the courthouse to advise Mr. Fisher how that should be designed or what offices will be in. That'll be part of the planning stage for the next plans. So we have to decide on that. And then also the uh, first thing the canal building which will have offices in it. Zane and I are talking about the possibilities that we'll have some support, but that has to be discussed amongst us what we want in that building. So that's the that we have to do. Okay, we may have a a workshop meeting next week and we can put those on the agenda and talk about it and start getting an idea. I don't, I don't think it's things that one commissioner needs to decide for the commissioner's court. I think we all need to know about it and begin on it. So we'll, we'll talk about it. Thank you. Um, status report on waste and recycling center, James. Uh, the only report I have on that is that uh, I met with TCQ last week for like three hours. There had, there had originally been a report made on the collection station that we were acting as a transfer station. So that was a few months ago, about maybe four to six months ago. When TCQ came over here to me, I wasn't aware of what we needed to become a transfer station. And, I didn't know we were acting as a transfer station. We were acting as a transfer station without a permit. So I was completely honest with TCEQ and I told them that I apologize, but I was I didn't know that. I wasn't worried. So they didn't find us, they didn't shut us down, nothing like that. They didn't get upset about that. They understood that it's changed hands a few times. 
So then I went to her, uh, Hancock, and I asked him to, just to make sure we had a permit. And he said, no, we had no permit there. So under the chapter, I believe it's 328, we're exempted to work, we're a collection station. And the way we were becoming a transfer station was we were accepting trash from these oil companies and we're not supposed to. So immediately when TCEQ told me uh, that we couldn't be a transfer station because we didn't have a permit, we shut it down. So we've had two meetings. I've had two meetings with TCEQ since then and everything has been going good. In the three hour meeting we had with TCEQ, uh, I explained everything to them, everything that we had been doing, everything they asked us to do. We're in compliance with everything they asked us to do. We're getting uh, all the situations that they had a problem with. We uh, had complied with everything. And what I did was I talked to Asma Barbora from TCEQ to send this to Erica's email to give one to the judge and each commissioner to verify that everything has been in compliance, is in compliance, and will be in compliance you know, with TCEQ. There's not a problem with TCEQ at all, because there was some kind of rumor that there was a problem with TCEQ over there. No, if there's any kind of rumor like that, I'm in charge over there. Uh, Y'all have my number, it's easy to get a hold of me. Get a hold of me first, we can take care of it. Uh, everything has been taken care of, and there's not a problem, that was just a rumor. Thank you, Jim. It, it mentions the landfill cap. I'm assuming this is on the property that Elliot Gross bought years ago out there. No, no that was, that's over there. Oh, okay. That's been over there. Oh, okay. Behind the hospital is where you're talking. Yeah. And this one is out. You turn on the road that goes to the cemetery. Uh, yeah. And it's down that road. See, I first look on the right hand side. We, we stopped burning over here at the site that we had, David, over here because uh, TCQ asked me if we. Uh, if I thought we had disturbed the original cap from there, and I was honest with them, I told them, yeah, I think we really did. And because what we dug, we didn't go ahead and install to go out to the old site. But now with uh, Naismith Engineering, uh, Ken is going to look it up to historically where we had that old site. And within that acres that we have there, we're going to try to find a site to burn. Previously, right now, we're not burning. But if we can find a site there that we're not going to disturb the cap, we're going to go ahead and start burning again. But as of right now, we've uh, ceased on burning and everything because we did disturb the cap. cap. You're, you're talking about that on the cemetery road? Right? Yes, yes, sir, Judge. And you do burn where you burn? A brush. Tree, brush. Brush or any kind of, any kind of wall number that doesn't have any kind of paint, tree. oil, anything like that. No tree or number. Any other question? Thank you, James. Uh, Tracy Shinho, which we did get changed at my phone. That's okay. Are you taking over the permit? I'm, I'm Tracy today. Okay, I'm Tracy. Uh, I've written about $20,000 worth of permits since the first of the year and have a few more left lying here. I should have had better sense and brought that report. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at trying to figure out is a way that we can come up with a computer-generated or personnel-generated system whereby our inspector can follow up on permits. Uh, the ones I've seen all expire in 90 days, and I have to believe that there's a few of those sites uh, where there's water uh, pipes out there that have been there longer than 90 days, they need to be re-permitted. Uh, the other thing is, is, is well entrances, and, and I got this from Mr. Hans, he said there are a lot of well entrances that were put in early on that were never paid for, never permitted, and things like that. And so those are a couple of the things that I'm trying to figure out a way that's relatively simple that, that we can there, there's nothing in the office now, and this is not criticism, but there's nothing in the office in the way of follow-up. Fortunately, Mr. Hans had been so familiar with the area and everything from having worked for Road Bridge a long time ago that, that he was really good at it. The lady that's there now is certainly capable, but she doesn't have his hands-on experience in the area, so trying to figure some way that would assist her giving her a, we need to look here, we need to look there kind of situation. That's, that's about it, it's quiet over there. Thank you. Any other comments?
Well, we adjourn next time we should adjourn. We'll have to sign the bills, correct? We have to approve. We have to approve. We need to sign off. You have two copies. One's the official and one's your. I have to sign the official. This one? No, that one right there. Shall we have it? No, this is I just need to sign this. We approve. On the very back page, correct. What is it? We have to sign the back. On the front, you do sign that too? each of the commissioner initials, and then you also sign the back. Okay. That's the back. That's the back. Excuse me, the last one. I looked at it. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Middle set, motion second to adjourn, and everybody. Yes. Vote yes, I get that, believe.